Okay, let's uh, start. So first, thing, first of all, let's go to shapes.js. <coughs> In shapes.js, uh, we're gonna create a data array. Um, data array and give it a values. Let's say two, thirteen, and fifteen, for example. Let's close that. And then now we're going to create a new SVG element. And let me show you how to do that. In order to create the, the SVG element, we need to append it to, to one of our elements on the page. If we'll go to, uh, to our page over here, uh, we can see, uh, I'm, I'm checking the element uh, tab, we can see that we have, uh, like we have at the file itself, we have the header, the head tag which contains the title, the link to the CSS, and our JavaScript, the D3 VG, V4, sorry, JS JavaScript. And in the body, we have the second JavaScript uh, uh, shapes.js. So um, now, as I said, we need to append our uh, SVG element to one of the elements on our page, since our page is, uh, has only body um, element on, on it, let's try to append it um, to the body. So we're doing it like that, D3, and now select, and in here I'm going to select the body, <coughs> sorry, and append SVG, SVG, close that, save that, go to our page refresh we're not going to see any change in the page itself but in the, the elements in the dom we can see that we have now on body appended svg so this is our canvas you can see that highlighted in in the top of the page but it is empty at the moment after creating the svg um, as, as we've noticed, the SVG size is uh, pretty small because that's the default that our uh, browser selected for us. Now let's uh, change that, that the SVG will fill 100% of the page. So let's go back. Over here we can uh, do, sorry, svg.attr, that's for the attribute, and in here I'm going to change the height. I'm going to set it to be 100%. And then ATTR for the width. And set it also to 100%. We can also uh, write it like that, just to make it more clear. Um, and Control S, go back to our page, refresh, and now we can see, first of all, over here we can see that we have a height and width with 100% attributes set, and also we can see the highlighted area, which contains 100% of the page, the shown page. Okay. Now let's make our life a bit easier by, by setting all this statement to be um, SVG and then equals to this statement. Um, let's uh, take it back like that. Um, in this, uh, what, I've, what I've done is I've set um, this statement, the D3 select body yeah, and, and, and the entire row, uh, and, and I, I've set it to uh, SVG. I've done that because now I want to uh, play a little bit more with SVG, and I don't I don't want to you know add more uh, chaining to this um, to this statement. Um, and now what I'm gonna do is just um, I'm gonna create a rectangle. Um, so I'm 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 writing SVG dot select. All okay, and in here I'm selecting all the rectangles that are already set in SVG. In our case, um, 
we have no rectangle rectangles in in SVG because it's it's a new one. Uh, but in some cases, uh, it can be that that we will get um, the rectangles inside SVG. Uh, so as I as I said, in our case, we'll get an empty list, uh, which is okay. And now I'm gonna set the data for those rectangles in our case an empty one but I'm gonna say it to be our data array which is what we've uh, stated over here and append oh sorry append um, a rectangle one thing I forgot also of course is to add over here enter and then the append Elements. Okay, let me uh, explain what we have in this specific line. So we've we've stated uh, SVG, uh, and then we've um, called the select all rectangle uh, function, which in our case we've got an empty list, and then we ask to set um, data array, which is stated over here, to the the rectangles. So in this case, we have three values. We will get three rectangles, new ones. And then we've asked to enter them uh, to uh, SVG, to, to the SVG element. And then to append um, the rect rectangle um, element to it. So let's let's see it. it it's a bit, a bit confusing, uh, but uh, once we'll, we'll play with it, you will get it uh, yeah, easier. Uh, let's save that go back to our web page and refresh it now we can see that in our, in the page itself we've got nothing still but in the dom uh, we can see that svg now contains three empty rectangles okay you cannot see their values you cannot see nothing um, it just empty rectangles now next what we're uh, gonna do is to give them some um, coordinates and and uh, more uh, attributes that will reflect them on our uh, web page okay um, so let's let's just uh, set it to be more uh, readable um, after um, append I'm gonna go one line down. Oh, you know what? Maybe let's do that like that. Data and then enter append. Okay, and now let's set default attributes for uh, our rectangles. And I'm going to do it like that. Let's copy it and paste it four times since I'm going to change four attributes one will be um, height one will be width and one will be x and the last one will be y so i'm gonna i'm gonna set to our three rectangles four new attributes um, a default one for all of them they will be the same for height with the x value and y value. I'm gonna set it, uh, let's say the height will be 150, oops, sorry, 150. It is a pixel, of course. Um, the width will be, oh, oh, sorry, 70. The x coordinate, I will say 10, and y coordinate will be 120 okay so those are as i said four uh, default values and our three elements of uh, the rectangle elements will get the same uh, four values let's save that and see what we've got in here refresh boom we see one big rectangle but if you'll see in our dom we have three rectangles the problem or not the problem uh, the situation is that they are all um, has have the same values so one is sitting on the other so if i'll say 
um, let's take the second one and change his coordinate to say 100 boom, we have 2 and if I take this one and say 150 or maybe let's say 250 just to make it apart we can see that now we have some other values um, okay so th those are three rectangles each one has has another at the moment has another attributes but um, if I refresh that they are all get the same values as, as first and they are all sitting at the same uh, exact place okay since um, we've done that manually and it's not the right um, option for us or the right thing to do let's go back to Atom and see how we can change that manually um, sorry dynamically um, so in order I, I want to change right now only the X value for that for, for our uh, rectangles and uh, I want to um, give you a, a small uh, refresh and say that each um, rectangle gets a data the data array over here and basically um, it runs three times it creates three times the rectangle and um, and each in each time I'm getting a different value and the first value will be 2 the second one will be 13 and the third value will be 15 so if I want to change that uh, dynamically uh, I'm going to use a function instead of a specific value I'm going to use a function in here without a function name just uh, use those uh, brackets in here I'm going to give D and I and um, in a second I'm going to explain why D and one and why I and basically that's what we need in here and in here I'm going to use the return and leave it like that and now let me explain what 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 is what I wrote over here so the function is getting a D which is each time a different um, uh, data value so at the first iteration it will get 2 second one will be 13 and the third one oops, sorry will be uh, 15 uh, in here sorry and this is will be the D value in each iteration but the I value is the one that represents the iteration the first one will be 0 the second one will be 1 and the third one will be 2 okay so now I'm gonna try to use those values um, in order to get some different values in here so um, as, as we we've noticed the width I'm gonna I'm gonna change the X uh, value which is uh, from right to left or from left to right um, and the our uh, rectangles width is uh, 70 so I'm gonna um, because I want to see um, a different um, rectangle in each uh, in each time in, in my page I, I'm gonna get this uh, uh, to return a value that will be bigger than uh, 70 so let's say 80 and 80 I'm gonna multiply that with I which is our iteration so the first rectangle will get um, height 150 with 70 its y coordinate will be 120 and its x coordinate will be i times 80 which is 0 right the second iteration it will get i with, which will be 1 times 80 which is 80 and the third rectangle will get in here i which will be 2 times 80 and it will give me 160 Let, let's save that go back to our page and refresh you can see that now we have three rectangles one with x value of 0 the second is 80 the third one is 160 that's basically how we can change that dynamically okay so now we have three rectangles and um, they are all the same height and it's pretty boring and it is not using any of our uh, data array um, I mean we have those three values but we're not using it so let's represent the values by the height of the rectangle okay so we, instead of 150 
uh, I'm gonna use again function and then those brackets d i which is exactly the same as before and then in here I'm gonna ask it to return return our height which is d okay let's save that go back in here refresh it so um, I didn't refresh that yet so instead of 150 150 and 150 I'm gonna expect it to be 2 13 and 15 okay refresh boom 5 13 and 15 if I'm gonna change that to be with bigger values meant to be more meaningful uh, I've changed to be 20 130 and 150 oh, save that and refresh we will get it like that I also can do it can go back to to this one and say instead of D I can say D times 10 or something like that just to make it more meaningful and there we go we have those three um, rectangles with different values but all uh, from the same uh, function and as you probably notice or if, if we are looking to create a bar chart or something like that you can see that it's upside down the reason is that that's how uh, browsers uh, work our um, X and Y zero coordinates um, are over here um, and we are used to that X and Y should be over here so let's try to flip that <clears throat> let's go back to Atom and by flip, uh, flipping it I'm gonna use dy attribute okay because that's what I'm trying to uh, change so instead of the 120 I'm gonna create again a function and in our function again I'm gonna use d and i and in here I'm gonna do I'm gonna write return and I'm gonna set my um, uh, origin of the y coordinate to be uh, let's say 350 and then I'm gonna reduce uh, the values that I'm getting in here which is d times 10 and let's see what we're getting here refresh voila so this is 0 for x and um, 300 minus 20 right because 2 times 10 is 20 so 350 sorry minus uh, 20 which is 330 the second one will be 350 minus d which is 13 times 10 so 350 minus 130 and this is our rectangle <coughs> sorry its y position is 220 and uh, same for the, the third one which is 200 of course that if we are looking uh, at our chart we have three bars but if I'm gonna add in here uh, let's say 25 24 and then 12 and then uh, 17 and I'll save that I'm gonna see how many values I have over here seven I'm gonna see a seven bar chart in here each one with a different height exactly like we uh, we are expecting it to be um, and also we can see that our bar chart is pretty I don't know uh, boring with the same black color let's try to change that and add um, let's say after this one an attribute of not color or something we'll call it we'll call it fill and let's say um, I don't know dark red okay save that go back and all our charts our bars sorry are dark redded um, and that's uh, not boring as black but it's something else 